Hi and welcome back to another video. We will still test Intel non-K overclocking with the Intel Alder Lake CPUs. I'm now switching to an i3-12100, which is a four core CPU. Maybe not that interesting for gaming, but this could be very interesting for HWBOT rankings. Because with the IPC uplift of this CPU, it could certainly, even on water, compete with a lot of the liquid nitrogen records. In the previous videos, we were still using just an AIO for cooling. We're now switching and upgrading to an XC7 RGB Pro Block from Corsair to also upgrade for custom water cooling. This should give us slightly more headroom. Also switched the thermal paste to Cryonaut Extreme, removed the stock paste because every degree will count. Holy shit. This is pretty much the first run. Just straight clock the 12100, 1.45 volt. 5.3 gigahertz using 130B clock across all of the four cores. This is running temperature-wise a bit on the edge. Maybe clockwise there is still headroom, we'll have to test. Memory is running just below 3000 C36, so that definitely helps. Might still have some headroom on the cache as well. But if you look at the score, this is below 4200 points. That is exactly like a 5600X. This is completely insane, considering that this CPU is like half the price then the 5600X, the performance is completely nuts. And this is just what you're looking at. That is a new four core world record. The previous four core record was at 3,700 points. This is like 400, 500 points almost higher. I was able to improve it further slightly to 5.4 gigahertz, but that is the maximum I can run custom water cooling. I mean, it's one out of one CPUs, could be random. I have no idea how good this is for 12100, but I still think 5.4 gigahertz for a random CPU, that is actually quite impressive and closing in on 4300 points. Now expanding to Y Cruncher or Gamma Cruncher, I'm still not 100% sure how to pronounce this benchmark, but it's 37 seconds. Just two or three weeks ago, this was at 52 seconds with an AMD 5300G, a CPU we also recently benched under liquid nitrogen, which will not be necessary anymore. So this CPU with unlocked B clock is so much better. Because the load is a bit higher on the Gamma Cruncher, I was only able to clock yeah, just below 5.3 gigahertz. I will now try to also run Geekbench 3, which is also held by AMD, also with the 5300G. Same setting as Gamma Cruncher. Let's see how it turns out. Yes. Well, that was also pretty simple and easy. It only beat the current record by about 40 points, but it is a new top score. It's good to have Sheik back in our videos, so we also have some solid content in this video. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the G6900. It's a dual core Celeron, which we will try to overclock next. The dual core Celeron is much further away from the record than what I expected. It's 1240 points, which is about 500 points away from the current record. That is quite a bit and will certainly require liquid nitrogen if it's even going to be possible. I'm not sure about that. 130 base clock was working fine. 140 did not boot for me. I'm not sure why. I will try if I can find out more about this. Also interesting. Whenever the Celeron is plugged, I cannot detect the memory sticks anymore. Also quite weird. Let's just try something different. I know that the Apex has those tiny buttons on there and in theory these allow to adjust the B clock on the fly in OS. So far I thought this would be kind of like a useless option but now with non-KOC this kind of changed. Again there is a very useful option in the Tweakers Paradise. You go to Runtime, B clock OC, change this one to Enable and then you can change the B clock step. Default is 1 MHz. If you would hunt records then you would most likely set this to 0.1 MHz just to get the most out of it. Stock is 1 MHz which seems to be a bit much considering that this would be straight like 40 MHz. We will just try with 0.5. I increased to 138 to see if this is working or not. At the same time, I lowered the memory frequency to 5200 to have more headroom for the B-Clock OC in Windows and also lowered the cache ratio to 31. And that should give us a bit more headroom in the cache, about 200 to 300 megahertz and the same for the memory. I also increased some voltages, core voltage to 1.5. I mean, it's only a dual core, so who cares? The temperature is not going to be high. System agent, just to be sure, to 1.2. Okay, so let's try to see if this is working. That is working very nicely. So straight to 140 B clock, no problem. I think I will just run a Cinebench quickly and see 
if the performance is in line. The Celeron is definitely going to be more of a challenge because 200 megahertz more equal 100 points more, which is not that much. My final max result for today 5.3, well above 5.3 gigahertz, 160 B clock almost and 1500 points. I also invested a lot more time investigating the base clock and what kind of frequency regions are expected for the base clock. We already saw with the 4 core CPUs that 130, 140 ish was okay, but with the Celeron, since it's using a much lower core ratio, a higher B clock is required to achieve clocks above 5 gigahertz, which is still fairly impressive because in the end we were hitting the 160 B clock region. That means we are overclocking the CPU by 60%. And that usually also means that you're getting like 55 to 60 percent performance increase comparing this to any other nowadays cpu that is absolutely impressive that is a region which we typically saw in the 775 era has been a very long time that the cpu allowed to be overclocked that much otherwise i tried to lower the cpu multiplicators and like cache multi memory multi and then tried to up the B-clock further, but that's not possible, not even 165 or 170. Also tried like very high ones, like 200, to avoid any kind of B-clock holds. That's also not the case. So seems to be maybe CPU limited. It will be very interesting if cold will help to increase the frequency limit on the B-clock. That's usually what's happening on CPUs. If we use liquid nitrogen, then typically 20 or 30 megahertz more should be possible. And then it might be that the Celeron can attack the dual core rankings, but since it's missing hyperthreading compared to the old 7350K, will be tough to beat the dual core rankings. But the four core rankings are now all in the hand of Intel. Previously, the 5300G, which is a four core AMD CPU, was in lead in the four core rankings. That's not the case anymore. And I guess within the next days and weeks, we should see some very impressive results with like 12400 and 12600 CPUs, depending what the guys on HWBot will come up with. Should be very interesting. It's a whole new playground, very exciting. We will see what happens. Regarding the boards, it seems to be the case that an external clock gen is definitely required to be able to run non-KOC, which also narrows this down to only a small amount of boards which can in theory support this, like the Extreme, Hero, Apex, Aqua from ASRock, maybe uh, Tachyon from Gigabyte, those boards with external clock gen should be able to support this. Cheaper boards usually don't have an external clock gen, which is an additional IC sitting typically close to the socket to provide an external clock signal to the CPU. On cheaper boards, that's usually, I mean, usually it doesn't make sense to have this IC. That's why I don't think that cheap boards will be able to do this, at least right now. We will see what the future brings. I will keep you updated. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.